Hey guys, I'm back, and this time I'm going to do an episode on simple harmonic motion, um, just the basics. So, um, we're going to talk about a mass and a spring. Oopsie, that's a line, not a spring. Spring, mass. Um, so, we expect a mass on a spring to just go up and down and up and down if you give it some energy. Um, and it'll do that forever if there's no friction or, or gravity. So if you plot it, the motion will look something like this. Um, and we can represent that using a, a an equation for cosines and sines. So we're going to say that this axis is the x direction. So we're going to say x is equal to a cosine omega t, where a here is our amplitude, and omega here is our angular frequency. Um, other features of having simple harmonic motion like this is that the period is going to be 2 pi over omega. Um, and that's going to be the period of time in which the motion repeats. Um, so if, like from peak to peak. Our frequency is going to be 1 over the period, and that's in oscillations per second. So it's not exactly clear um, intuitively where the mass comes in and where the spring comes in for mass and spring. This is kind of like your starting point for a lot of mass, uh, simple harmonic motion problems. So we're going to kind of make this more clear about how the motion works and what it's dependent on. Since it's a spring, uh, the first thing that comes to mind to use is Hooke's law, f equals negative kx. And we can also use um, f equals ma. So we're just going to write that here, f equals ma. So this is basically all we'll need um, to derive the equations of motion. We can say that um, we can solve for our acceleration here by saying negative kx, so divide both sides by m, and we get acceleration is equal to a. We also know that our acceleration is equal to the second derivative with respect to time of x. Now this is interesting, especially useful, because we have an equation for x right here. So we can set these equal by taking the derivative twice of this equation. So dx over dt of this equation here is going to be negative a omega sine omega t, like that. And we just need to take the derivative one more time, the second derivative. That's going to be equal to negative a omega squared cosine of omega t. If we set that equal to our acceleration, we get that a is equal to this. Now notice that if we rearrange this a little bit, so omega squared out front, uh, the negative goes there, a cosine omega t equal to our acceleration. We can get that uh, this part here looks exactly like the equation we started with, which is just x. So we can replace this whole thing with x. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and rewrite it um, like this. So a is equal to negative omega squared a cosine 
omega t, which is equal to omega squared times x. We don't need this anymore. OK, so now that we have our acceleration equal to omega squared x, we can also use this bit here. So we can say that omega squared x is equal to negative kx over m. You can cancel out the x's. Oh, I almost dropped the negative there. OK, and we can cancel the negatives as well. So we're left with omega squared is equal to k over m. And omega is equal to the square root of k over m. And now, since we know what omega is in terms of the spring constant and the mass, we can put that into our equation of motion. And it makes a little bit more sense now. So we can say that x is equal to a cosine square root of k over m times t. OK, so yeah, that's basically the basics, um, basically. <laughs> um, uh, what other thing could I do? Oh yeah, I could talk about the energy as well. It's also useful to know what the energy of the system is. So um, I'm just going to rewrite this here so it stays on the board. x is equal to a cosine square root k over m t. That's a little messy, but it's fine. Um, and erase all this. I think I'll keep that up there. Um, there we go. So we can talk about the total energy as the sum of the potential energy, potential energy, plus the kinetic energy. So this energy is always conserved. Um, we can say that our potential energy is just the spring potential energy. So that's going to be 1 half kx squared. And our kinetic energy is going to be 1 half mv squared, which is the velocity of the mass at any point. Um, since energy is conserved at all points, we can pick a, a really convenient point to, to find what the total energy is. So for this mass on a spring, we want to pick a point where the velocity here is zero, so we don't have to deal with this term. And when the velocity is zero, it's going to be at the top or the bottom. Um, so we can just say that it's at when x is equal to a. So when x is equal to our amplitude, we can uh, say that the velocity is zero because it's a, it's a turning point. So we can rewrite our energy to look like this. 1 half k a squared at x is equal to, oopsies, that's that supposed to be a k. There we go. 1 half k a squared. And notice that there's no x in this at all anymore. And we can say that the total energy of the system is always going to be 1 half k a squared. So we can write this as 1 half k a squared is equal to 1 half kx squared plus 1 half mv squared. And using this, we can uh, rearrange it and solve for v, for example, and find out what the velocity is of the mass at any point. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for the viewer. OK. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.